104.5 XLO, New England's best variety. We're Jen and Frank. Well, we're so excited. We're joined by singer-songwriter Louis Capaldi. Louis, good morning. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I mean, this, the, apart from the pandemic, it's a great day. Apart from the pandemic, everything's going great, wet, so swimmingly. Now, have you been writing a ton of new music during the pandemic while you've been home? Yes, I have. I've been trying to steer clear of, like, pandemic themes though do you know what i mean because you know there's going to be like 400 songs that are released about lockdown and quarantine and so and i just can't I, there's nothing in my mind that makes me what i don't want to there's nothing i want to write about less than being stuck in the house with my parents uh, with my mother showing me tiktoks every two minutes do you know what i mean I'm, I'm, i don't need that that's not a song anyone needs to hear <laughs> Obviously, you're having great success. What point in your life did you realize, wow, this is really happening? I don't know. I don't. I just, just it's always. Um, I think it's one of the one of the gigs that we played. I think. I think there's a there's a venue in Scotland called the Barrowlands, which is where I grew up going to see shows and stuff. And uh, I always saw bands that played there as like, oh, they've made it. They're like a huge band. I, I remember. I used to always think, oh, the bands that have played there are like. They were my heroes. And then two years ago, at the same week that we released Someone You Loved in November 2018, I played two shows there. And it was like, like wow, I'm doing like two nights at this venue and what that I, I thought. Because I didn't feel like, I didn't feel any different or whatever, obviously. And um, yeah, I think maybe, maybe then. What is the thing you miss the most now that you've been locked down for a little bit? Do you miss the touring or being able to spend time with friends? Uh, I miss a, a, a lovely pint, a lovely pint of lager. Like a nice oh. one, do you know what I mean? I love it. I'm very familiar miss, with what you mean. Yeah, I don't miss my friends. I don't miss anything. And do you know what? A pint of Guinness, like a nice pint of Guinness, is you can't because you can't enjoy. You can enjoy a beer at home. It's still the same. You can only really enjoy, I think, when it's like from draft and stuff. So yeah, I think maybe a pint of Guinness and also, of course, playing live. <laughs> Speaking of playing live, is when did you start out like actually playing in pubs? Yeah, um, I started, I, my first time I sang on stage, I was four. And then the first time I started playing pubs, I would have been 11 years old. Yeah, around 11 years old. And uh, I used to sneak in and hide in the bathrooms. And I would wait until it was my turn to play a set. And, uh, and yeah, I would come out and I would sing. And to this day, it's the most fun I'd ever had, you know, before puberty. It's, uh, it was really, it was really, really fun. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna guess they didn't give you a Guinness when you were 11. They didn't know, and, and as much as I, as much as I rallied for one, they were they were pretty adamant that that was illegal. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> what squares? What squares? That's so awesome, Lewis. Though that your parents, you know, supported your mm. musical abilities at that yeah. age, and, and they saw that in you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. I mean, you could call it support, or you could call it. Um, bad parenting, letting me go to a pub at 11 years old. I don't know, it's up to you. Now, have you written a song in quarantine that you think is going to be a great single? And uh, is it something you are excited to yes. have everybody hear? 100%. I've written a few that I, that I think I'm very excited to have people hear. So, um, I mean, I hope that people like them, but I, I kind of thought, should we release music in 2020? And I thought, no, people have suffered enough. People have suffered enough um, <laughs> already this year, and they don't need another one of my singles about, you know, being in despair because a girl doesn't like me. I think that there's bigger problems in the world right now. But um, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I, I'm really excited about a lot of the stuff that we've been working on. So, Lewis, um, you know, you mentioned your big hit, Someone You Loved, um, mm -hmm. and before you go, what makes, in your opinion, like what makes a great love song connect with people? Uh, I, do, I always find not writing them about love is, is brilliant. Because So I wrote... This is quite depressing, but I wrote Someone You Loved and Before You Go about two people in my family who had died. I found that I really had a stride when I wasn't writing, necessarily writing songs about heartbreak. So like a song, Someone You Love, which is about my grandmother passing away, um, a lot of people relate to it because of a breakup that they've had. So I think keeping it like vague like that is quite, it's quite nice just to let people kind of, um, uh, you know, uh, again, draw their own conclusions from this stuff. Right, they connect into the song in their own way, which is exactly. cool. 
Yeah, it's amazing. Anybody who's uh, trying to come up in the entertainment business at some point or another uh, gets discouraged. Somebody tells them they can't do it or whatever. Do you have a message for people who are still trying to, you know, make it in this uh, in the world of entertainment? Yeah, give up because there's not enough money to go around and I, I am just getting started. Just stop immediately because I don't need any more competition. I'm lucky to get here as it is. So just part of the breaks. Um, no, I think, um, I think, no, I think uh, you just need to keep, if you love doing it, it's something that you can never really put aside. At no point in my life, again, I got very lucky. At, like, I met my manager when I was 18 and stuff and thingy, but at no point did I ever think, you know, I'm not going to do this. It was just something that's like, it's almost a problem now because music was like my hobby and everything. So I think, yeah, just if you're a songwriter or whatever or, a, or an actor or anything, just practice whatever your craft is every single day. Lewis, um, have you had a chicken parm lately? I have not had a chicken palm. No, I can't believe that chicken palm thing. Really, really got. I don't that video. Um, I was, I was. I don't know if it came across. I was hammered. I was absolutely hammered. The lady asked me about what it was like to be nominated for a Grammy, and I, you know what? I had, I hadn't actually had a chicken palm, in quite, and like I'm talking like years before the interview, and I just, it just something struck a chord. I don't particularly remember saying a lot of that but it, it really um yeah people really seem to to resonate with that feeling but um so yeah no that's the last time i have one no but it was delicious it was lovely I, I gotta tell you that when you said that i totally knew that feeling i totally that's it. it's like that that kind of happy bloat you're bloated a little bit but you're kind of like you're not you don't feel uncomfortable it's just a nice warm fuzzy feeling i know i know i know <laughs> Lewis, you? thank you so much oh no worries man thank you very much for um for taking the time to speak to me and uh, I appreciate yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Absolutely. We, we love the songs and uh, thank you so much yet and congrats on all your success. Oh, nice one. Thank you very, very much. 104.5 XLO.